Sutton United Talk Time on the podcast. It's the Sutton Podcast. And there it is. Sutton United at the GM Foxhall Conference have put down First Division Coventry City, winners of the FA Cup themselves less than two years ago. And what a moment to enjoy for the fans of this Surrey side. They've had their moments before, but never one like this. But the whistle goes now. Delight for Sutton United. Sutton United for the National League are through to the last 16 of the FA Cup. No longer English football's perennial non-league club. A 123-year crescendo reaches a new peak for Sutton United, who are promoted to the Football League for the first time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Sutton United Talk Time on Podcast, the Sutton Podcast. We're on the Sunday service, um, on time today, not new, not late, on a Sunday, it's doing doing as we should. Um, it's going to move around a bit because as you probably all heard, um, Rosie's taken a big interest in the Sutton United ladies, so it will depend on their fixtures as well. I get to do these now, um, but the podcast will still come out at roughly the same time. Um, don't forget to join in the chat. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. I can't remember the channel name on YouTube. Some weird sequence of numbers, but if you find it, you find it. Um, join in any chats. It's good to see anything that pops up. I think I've got the hang of it. Um, probably going to make a hash of it today if I do, but um, never mind. Uh, joining me today, we've got Julian, who is also Magnum and JR on the various different forums and blogs and whatnot. Hello, Julian. How are you? I'm good, Mike. Thank you very much. Yes. Very, very good. Just warmed up from yesterday, just about. So, uh... oh, well, I was nice and toasty yesterday. <laughs> I'm, sh- I'm, sh- I'm sure everyone knows because I haven't stopped moaning about it. <laughs> but um, so I don't know where to start really with yesterday. Um, I suppose we should probably get a controversial bit out the way. Um, mm. 1500 quid out of pocket. That's like 12 pairs of trousers, is it? <laughs> Yeah, so, so I heard, gutted that, that I left early. I waited and waited, and then um, I, 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 had to, I had to go. I said to Adrian, you need to do it on time, but he was running late, and uh, uh, unfortunately I had to leave. And then I, I think it might have been Mr. Taylor, by the sounds of things, that pulled out the wrong case. So I told him he owes me 1,400 quid. Um, or or 12 pairs of trousers that's... or 12 pairs of trousers yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah absolutely you know I'll, yeah he can take me shopping in paul smith or somewhere and, uh, <laughs> he can get some get, get, uh, get some new pairs i need some new pairs but, uh, yeah yeah I, i'm sure he will as long as paul smith is spelt like primark but anyway um, <laughs> <laughs> um but on to the game so um just a couple of little things uh as the teams were announced, obviously, I've said many, many times, there's a reason why I talk about football and pay to watch football. But were you surprised to see Dave Chuck straight back in, considering Enzio had such a great game the other night? I wasn't really, to be honest. Um, if he was fit enough, which they, he obviously was, um, he's the go-to <laughs> that, um, Matt, like He's one of the first names on the team sheet, I reckon. So I, 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 I wasn't surprised. Um I don't think he had his best game at Stevenage. Um, the Stevenage um, players marked him out of the game quite well, but of course, then he did produce that bit of magic, the lovely cross for yeah. Richie to, to head home. So, and we know that David's got that, and he did a few amazing runs yesterday. Um, so, I, w- I wasn't surprised, although Enzo did have a cracking game on Tuesday. Um, yeah. But it is um, it is a squad squad game. I'm sure Enzo will probably feature uh, more prominently. Um, on Tuesday night. Yeah, I, I obviously I did the, the whole fan hub thing and I, I actually thought that we would start with Enzio and Dave coming off the bench for the last 20, 30 minutes yeah. to just literally run his fresh legs at some uh, very tired legs and um, obviously change the Northampton's game plan because as you say, teams now plan to, to double up on Dave mostly, um, which would have thrown them a little bit not, not to, to start him. Yeah, um, and another one. I, was, I thought Richie had a shout to start as well. I mean, obviously, I love I love Omar, um, but I do yeah. think Richie had, had had a little shout to start um, with same kind of thinking of put him on batter, 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 and then the last 20, 30 minutes um, stick Omar on. Yeah, 
Um, but onto the game. Mm. How, how was it there? It seemed quite nervy listening to it. <laughs> um, I, I think, that, well, the first half, I think, was a bit um, was a bit ordinary. Um, th- th- their keeper did an out <coughs> save from Harry, I think it was Harry Smith. Um, really, really good save down low to his right. Um, but we we didn't quite get our passing game going. We we, we were miscontrolling it um, a little bit. Um, but Matt does what he does very well at half time. Has a word with the players, and they came out firing second half. Um, um, you know, the first 15, 20 minutes were excellent, and then the keeper did another brilliant save from Will Randall. And somehow it got stuck between his legs. The rebound, so he couldn't mm. put it in. Um, and, and, and we looked um, very good, I thought. And you know, I've read some of the comments in the Northampton forum, and you know. They're basically saying that we were outplaying them and, and stuff like stuff like that, which is which is good, good to see. Um, and, and we were very good. Northampton, of course, came into the game. They knocked the ball around very nicely, as as we found with all the League Two clubs generally. That um, some of the passing is excellent from from these League Two clubs. They're quick and, and stuff, but we have such a resilience and in, um, in our team, and, and, and we've got plenty of weapons ourselves. So um, it was a much better second half performance, I thought. Um, I don't think the tempo was quite as high as uh, Tuesday. I thought Tuesday's game was was absolutely brilliant as a spectacle to watch, but also the tempo. Because I think Colchester are a decent side, and that, even though I think they're in a false position, and their the result yesterday at Salford sort of proves that. I think it's three 0 wasn't it? I think. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. So um, yeah, you know they, they they were very good against us, but we were all equally very good as well, and that was a cracking game. Um, so. Yeah, we, we were much better second half, but of course, then we, the sending off sort of um, came, <laughs> does make things very difficult for um, the 10 men. Um, and so you, you automatically think, well, yeah, we'll take a point. And, yeah. uh, and people would be told again, to be fair, both people said, we would take a draw, won't you? And we said, well, yeah, absolutely. We didn't want to we didn't want to lose to Northampton because that would have made them go above, <laughs> us, gone above yeah. us. But if we'd got managed to get a win, then then we're having a bit of a gap, which would be nice. And there's, you know, the Tramia winning again, there is a bit of a gap between first, second and those below. Um, so, but, it, you know, it was a decent hard-earned point against a good side. Don't forget that they got relegated from League One last year. So exactly. You know, they're, yeah. going to be, they're always going to be up there or thereabouts. <laughs> so. well, we did, before the game, um, Claire and Charles and I were discussing it and... Um, they obviously were going for a, a, an absolute goal fest. Yeah. I did say, I did say, well, hang on a minute. I think it might be the two managers tying it all up a little bit and it could be very, very boring. So it's either going to be a nil-nil draw or a five-five draw. And I think I actually went for a, a, a one-nil win in the end. But um, it did seem that it was kind of, we cancelled each other out uh, a lot. It was a bit of a chess game. Um, I'm not sure listening to it, whether even if we had the 11 men, it would have we would have got the win. I think it would have got quite cagey towards the end, and I think it probably would have petered out to a nil nil eventually anyway. Um, yeah, quite possibly. I, I couldn't see. I, I felt that both defences played really, really well. Yeah. Um, and there were there were so, they couldn't break us down. Um, they couldn't get past our defence. I mean, Bizan- Dean Bazanis had <coughs> nothing to do in the second half. I mean, yeah. there were some dangerous balls in and stuff like that, and some great clearances, but he didn't have a save to make. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and, and and likewise, really, their keeper didn't have too much to do. We had a few shots from outside the box, but I think they defended very well as well. Um, one thing I have noticed, and it, it seems to happen quite a lot, there's, there were a lot of fouls that went unpunished from both sides. Mm-hmm. And there was one in the um, first half, Ben Goodliffe was pulling the guy's shirt off his back. I mean, and the linesman had a clear view of it. It was a blatant penalty all day long. To them and he, and he doesn't give it but then they were doing fouls all the time as well and they just, he just allowed play to go on i suppose you don't want to keep on breaking up it's a bit a bit odd you've got i don't understand the laws of the game when you've got the laws of the game it's supposed to be a foul and they don't, they don't blow up um yeah i mean a lot of, that's been said for many years different levels of football about oh well we can't do that because it'll be um fouls every couple of minutes or would, would end up games with 7v7. It's like, well, actually, you wouldn't. It only happened a couple of times. 
Yeah. Once, if a Premier League game got abandoned because the ref was sending people off for the bookable offences that they just kept totting up, the sponsors and the league would not. The players would soon start learning. Now we can't do this. I mean, there's things going on in penalty boxes which are just ridiculous at corners. Yeah. And the ref has a nice long talk to them, walks two paces away, and they do exactly the same thing straight away. It's like, yeah, I mean that happened yesterday quite a few times. Yeah. Uh, 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 and he had to keep on stopping and having a go. But he was very um, <coughs> he one thing he didn't like, which I don't see that often, but he kept on stopping the throwers taking um, gaining taking, yards. Yeah, uh, saw that you know he might see it a couple of times in the game, but he was doing it all the time. Mm-hmm. So he obviously didn't. He obviously didn't like that. And I mean, Northampton West Ham have gained quite a few yards on a few occasions because they got an absolute weapon of a, a guy with a massive throw. I mean, he launches it straight onto the, you know, uh, anywhere near the the touch line, near the penalty area. He, he launches it straight onto the penalty spot. I mean, mm-hmm. and at pace as well. Um, it was quite a quite a weapon. They, I, I should imagine they get a few goals from that uh, that that way. I mean, reminds me of. Um, George Carline, I think it was, at uh, Chesterfield used to do that. And, uh, and we struggled then uh, in those days, but we've seen, we coped very well yesterday with that. Mm. This is what we really need to be doing is, I used to do in Sunday League, is every time we had a referee who used to make me fussy about a certain thing, I'd just make a little note. And next time we had that referee, I, I was able to say to the players, right, he's really fussy on this. Yeah. And it used to wind up the opposition no end because we had a ref would get fussy about the throw-ins and we would always be going, is this okay, ref? Is this the right spot? And then <laughs> they would always get pulled up and then they'd get nuts because we're never getting pulled up for it. And it's uh, that's because we've learned very quickly that this ref hates that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we need a need our little black book of what that goes on. But let's let's, let's go on to the, to the subject of um for the probably the first time since I put out all these little uh tell me what you're thinking, um, there was quite a lot of comments about the, the red card, obviously. Yeah. Um, so a few of them, I'll come back I'll to your comments in a sec and what you think, but a few of them. Um, so from the COCs on Twitter, um, I hope the bloke is okay after such a shocking challenge. There were a few laughing tear faces after that one. Um, surely that's going to be appealed under, after the suspension is ridiculous. So I'm Tim on Twitter. Then we've got a couple comedian, um, that's Mark on Facebook. Comical, this is going to be revoked from Paul on Facebook. Can't see what ta- what tackle he's talking about. That was Chris on Facebook. Uh, then we got Chalmers, who was saying, "This is what happens in football nowadays. We try and deceive officials, convince them they've seen something that isn't there, or what's happened up and down the country. Um, it happens Premier League and beyond." Um, there were some other comments from Ryan, Andrew, and Gandamadian, um, but I'll leave out the swear words. So they were interesting. Um, <laughs> what I couldn't understand was the opponent manager he said in his interview he'd seen that and this is the, the video i put out earlier he'd seen the replay and he said he, he he went right over him didn't go for the ball and this is after he said he'd seen the replay um now i kind of see what the fourth official and the manager might have saw first view so if you watch it and try and imagine yourself from their angle mm. first view craig's leg does go down the player does pull his foot up and goes onto the floor. So you could kind of go, well, hang on, was that a stamp? However, I think the free kick was given because Craig picked up the ball. So I think the first the free kick was given because Craig sort of grabbed hold of the ball. So I think it was a deliberate handball. Um, and then the fourth official went to call the referee over and said, obviously, he thought it was a stamp. But the ref was closer and looking at it from a different angle. So how, how, why, why doesn't he say to the, the fourth, no, I, I didn't see it that way. Um, I didn't mm. overrule it. Um, but you were on the, the curve, so you kind of had the same view as the ref, almost. Yes. How did it, how did it look to you guys? Yeah, well, um, and I, I, I've obviously watched it back again, and, and it's obviously from the more or less the same place um, on, our, on the Collingwood Rex side. I know I can see exactly what Craig was doing there. He was trying to get his body between um, uh, um, shielding the ball uh, from the player. So he was going over, he was going to plant his foot down. That was the thing. So he went to plant his foot, and he's, he's then shielding the ball with players behind him. And he can't get it. He's got his arm out. Um, he's got his arm out, but it's not bent, it's straight. So mm-hmm. there's no elbow. Um, it's a straight arm. 
Um, and again, he's using his body to protect uh, the ball uh, and, and stopping the player from getting there. That, that's, that, that's how I saw it. And I can't, I've, I've tried to see where the stamp was. I couldn't see it. I couldn't, I couldn't see a stamp at all. From the other side, maybe they saw some contact and that may be where they thought it was, uh, what ha that's what happened. But he wasn't, he was planting his foot, he just got his foot yeah. across. He was going across to make himself big, <laughs> stop the player um, get, uh, getting the ball. And then, of course, he went down, handled the ball, the ball um, went out, and then the, one of their players booted it at him. Because yes. of that foot. And yeah. of course, no action was taken. Um, so it's all a bit, a bit odd. Um, I mean, it depends what's in the referee's report. Um, but it's just bizarre that the fourth official chose to get involved. <coughs> I can't recall. It probably has happened, but I can't recall them, the fourth official getting involved in something like that. But they, uh, they always say, when the managers complain to them and say, oh, aren't you going to call anything? No, I can't, I can't get yeah. involved. It's up to the ref. Yeah. Well, either this is nonsense or that's nonsense. What You can't, you can't now have both. No, no, so, exactly. I mean, it was, yeah. Uh, very, very bizarre. And as you say, the referee was five yards away. Well, if he can't see it from there, you know, and we also had obviously the, the linesman on that side, obviously a different angle. But again, because they're mic'd up and we don't know what they're what they're saying to each what other. Saying, no, the the fourth official and the fourth official said, "Oh, it's a stamp. He's off. You got to send him off." And you yeah. took it on your say so. Well, well, you know, he's part part of the uh, the four officials, I suppose. So he's <coughs> well, not allowed to do that. But it, it, it's a bit odd, and it'd be interesting to see whether the club appeal or not. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a there's a case for. I'm I'm being cynical now. A case for appealing it, and delaying the decision, uh, or the possible suspension, because they, a he'll be available on Tuesday, and b Harry's getting closer and closer to coming back. Yeah. So if we push back the suspension a little bit, even on the risk of it taking one more game, um, I don't know. That's probably being way too cynical. Um, whether it's worth doing that or not, I, I, I don't know, but um, I, I can't see it and unless we're all missing something. We're assuming it's a stamp um, because yeah. of what the manager said, but it actually might be for something completely different. Um, so we'll, we'll obviously have to, 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 to wait and see. Well, and I'm seeing Craig's tweet and so, someone tweeted him and said, what were you sent off for? And he's, he's got the shoulders. <laughs> you tell me, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, and I, and I know obviously the club have seen it all and um, various officials have seen it and they didn't <laughs> see what it was for um but you never know with these appeals it's the problem you know exactly you know if, if, if we were part of wales um you know like Wrexham, the appeal to the, uh, the welsh fa and it'll get, it'll get rescinded but um uh unfortunately <laughs> we're not so we can't um, uh, unfortunately i don't know anyway <laughs> <laughs> um right so just before we finish on the game um i'm remembering this week who, who's your player of the day who's your ah. player? Good, right. So I, I was thinking about this during the game yesterday because I obviously knew that you were going to ask me this, and I was thinking, did you? Did, did, did more confident than anyone else was. <laughs> did, did anybody really stand out? And I was thinking, well, I don't know. Maybe I should be players of the day because I think the back five were superb, um, including Dean Bazanis and that. I think they were all superb to keep Northampton out because they did look dangerous going forward, but they really didn't get too near the goal. And I thought it was superb, but I think. I think I'll go for Joe Kizzy. There was a tackle in the first half where you thought the guy was going to score, and Kizzy, oh, my God, got this absolutely brilliant tackle near the penalty spot, and somehow comes away with the ball, I think, and it, or it certainly blocks the guy from shooting. It was absolutely superb, and I think Kizzy had an outstanding game, and he did a really good header right at the end as well when his dangerous cross came in. Uh, but, you know, you've got to say Louis John and Ben Goodliffe were outstanding as well. I mean, John John was in the wars. I mean, he, he, got, he got kicked in the... Uh, well, actually, it was quite a high kick, actually, and the referee didn't do anything about it. And we thought, well, no, I think he booked him, but he, it, we were all shouting red because obviously Easty gets it red. But I think, you know, the whole of the back five were excellent, but I'd give it to Kizzy. I thought yeah. he was out, absolutely outstanding. And he put in an amazing cross, obviously, for um, Randall's um, header. Yeah. Um, well, the, the commentary team on I Follow had, had picked him as man of the match as well. Um, oh, did they? All and, right. Yeah, um, they actually picked him quite early, I think probably after that tackle in the first half, and then it kind of that caught the eye, and then everything he did, they were like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, he's definitely man of the match. Yeah. Um, but that's going to lead us very, very nicely on to the big game on Tuesday. 
Mm. Um, we are in the Pizza Cup and we are against Harrogate. And joining us now from Harrogate is Jordan. Hello, Jordan. How are you? Hi there. Very well. Thank you. Are you OK? Grand, grand, grand. Um, so you guys have been in the Premier League. Uh, Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <actually. laughs> oh, my God. I just jumped forward 30 years. Um, so you guys have been in League Two for a full year. So you're obviously well used to all the travelling because you do the supporters club. Um, so organising all the travel, you, you it's, it's old news for you, is it? That's right. Yeah, I mean, I've arranged the travel for about eight years for, for our supporters club, which is great. I mean, fortunately, last season, even though we could watch the games on, on TV, but we, we couldn't go. So this is the probably the first season, like yourself, that, that we've been able to get to these uh, these new grounds, which is uh, which is brilliant, and um, get to games out, like in the Papa John's Trophy, which, again, we weren't able to go to, uh, to last season, unfortunately. <clears throat> so how... How's it been for you guys? I know you, you, you basically, you, you are kind of 12 months ahead of us with the whole changing the pitch, having quite a small squad, um, getting used to playing professional full-time football. How, how's it kind of been for you guys going to year two now? Um, I think we're, the aim is, is probably similar to last season in that we do want to, we want to stay up. We want to be, become a, an established sort of league team. We don't want to just come up, spend a couple of seasons in in League Two, and then go back down to the National League. Because we, we both know how difficult it is to to get out of the, get out of that division. But um, it's been it's been new, um, very much different to non-league football uh, with the the segregation. And we didn't spend a huge amount of time in the National League either. So we I think we spent two two seasons in the National League before getting promoted and <coughs> being in National League North. Um, and that that was massively different to, to the national league, but we, we seem to be coping all right. Um, like you say, small small squad, um, which has taken its toll recently until we've been able to bring some fresh bodies in. Um, but yeah, ch- changing the pitch and uh, cu- coming away from the three G, which which was fantastic for us, um, having having that at the club and and what it brought to the club and lots of new families because kids were kids were training on there during the week. So it's it's built us up as a club as well. Um going from having attendances of sort of five, six hundred uh, a few years ago to to now. I think yesterday it was about two thousand six hundred against Oldham. So we're just growing. Um we don't want to grow too quickly. Um but yeah we're just, we're just sort of building ourselves up and hopefully we'll become an established league club. Yeah, it's, it's fairly, well, almost exactly similar, isn't it, Julian? I mean, the only tiny, tiny difference is we didn't find it really that difficult to get out of National League because we didn't even try. And <laughs> we got out of National League, so <laughs> <laughs> we can't say how long it took because we were trying. We never tried. We just accidentally got promoted. Um, but all, all that other stuff about the pitch and the, the families doing that is exactly what we've been saying. And one of our biggest worries, I was quite proud, really, when we got promoted and uh, almost almost right away one of the big first concerns for everyone was well hang on a minute where are the ladies going to play where are the kids going to play where are the community teams going to play it was never ever about the first team because we all knew the first team were going to play somewhere and they were, they were going to mm. have a great pitch but it's all the knock-on teams um and it took a while because everyone kind of was assuming we didn't want our pitch to be ripped up because it was magic <laughs> wasn't it Julia? <laughs> Well, we, we, we were quite lucky because we had the, the 3G pitch at the ground, but then also we got a relationship with one of the, the nearby secondary schools where the club funded a 3G pitch there as well. So a lot of the sort of the evening where, where the kids w- would do the player development centre and they would have that every night of the week and um, sort of six aside, they were able to move all that to the um, uh, to this school. And I'd, do know that the, the club have also got some planning permission as well on a, a plot of land just on the way out of Harrogate where they're, they're hoping to build a, a proper training facility. So at the moment, the, the team are training over over at Leeds, um, which is about 20 miles away. So having somewhere in Harrogate where the team can train, there's also ho- hopefully be able to get some housing there as well, which can be used for, for players who, who are maybe on loan or... Um, coming over to the uh, coming out to the country, but and also, 
I say with the uh, with the children and and having that real sort of family club feel and it, it's um, so that that that'll be a, a really good step for us, I think. Perfect, perfect. So going into this season, so you, you survived last year. Um, what were your what were your expectations, and how, how are we comparing to those at the moment? So at the well, before the season started, I would have been happy with essentially just staying in the league, um, possibly improving on on last season's finish, where I think we were about seventeenth last season. So we're, we're currently <laughs> exceeding that. Um, we had a very strong start to the season, um, started very well, and, and as a football fan, I think it's just naturally you, you get carried away and think, oh yeah, we could uh, we could go up to. To League One, which I'm sure you guys are you guys are feeling at the moment, but no, um... <laughs> no, no, no. We're all still. We got. We've just ticked off 44 points yesterday, and I can almost guarantee if I ask anyone, everyone's going to be like, "Well, two more wins, and we got to our 50 points." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, that's what we were doing last season. As soon as you hit that 50 points, then the um, the pressure's off. I mean, you, yeah. we've seen some poor teams in in the league i mean we we played oldham yesterday who were in all sorts of trouble and speaking with their supporters we, who were who were absolutely fantastic but i mean they were they were poor um scunthorpe as well so i think you you need to be not not particularly good to um to to get relegated out of this division so you you, you would have gone to the harrogate game not last year, obviously, but a couple of years before. Or oh yes, happened? yeah, yeah, yes, uh, yes. I've been to Harrogate a couple of times. Um, I've got a friend, of, um, a work friend of mine, is a season ticket holder there. I'm looking forward to going up there and uh, meeting up with them and uh, uh, the last game of the season. It is. Um, <laughs> so that would be nice and sunny. But yes, um, yeah, I've been, I've, I've been there, and um, I'm sure the ground has changed <coughs> since we last went um uh because because of the various improvements that they had to make obviously they haven't got the 3g anymore for a start but they would have had to um make some other ground improvements like we are um but i expect they've got theirs done quicker than 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 us but it's, although it's not our fault it's so, yeah i was going to say good. <laughs> we've got everything on order it's just not been delivered <laughs> yeah covid sort of got in the way unfortunately yeah it's, uh, it's frustrating because obviously we got 3,600, just under 3,600 yesterday. Um, and had we had everything in place, which we were supposed to have done, but COVID gets in the way, and we would have got over 4,000 yesterday. Because uh, we're only restricted, I don't know if you know, um, Jordan, but we're only restricted to about 470 away fans at the moment. So, right. So, you know, Northampton obviously sold their allocation out very quickly. Um, but that should be going up to 1,400 by the end of the season, all being well. Which is good because we've got Bradford last game, uh, <coughs> uh, but but it makes a difference for, our, for us clubs and your club, I'm sure. Is it just the gates? You know, two six is an excellent gate for Harrogate. When a few years ago, as you say, we're getting four five hundred, um, and it just makes it just makes a massive difference in the atmosphere. People people want to go. I say my you know the, 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 my, the business people that I know that they, they go now and I absolutely love it. But it's only you know in the last couple of years, and, that, and the kids go, and they absolutely love it. And it's a community club, much like Sutton. It's very much like Sutton, I think, Harrogate. And uh, you know, it, it's good getting all the kids involved. It's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, I, I I've always obviously loved bringing kids to, to football. I think it's, it's a great idea because they can have the freedom. I mean, I've I've started as I mentioned taking Rosie to the ladies um, side, and it's like a proper throwback to ages and ages ago because you can just wander around everywhere you just let her run riot and shout and scream because <laughs> it's like you can't get out you're fine go on crack on with whatever you want to do yeah. um so it is a bit difficult because when you're thinking about bringing her to the games and there's like 3,500 I'm like oh, she's not gonna see um mm. so you have to kind of try and get on shoulders and stuff so it gets more difficult as it gets crowded so it's like a double-edged sword with the, the big yeah. crowd and, and where you stand Mike the language is a little bit fruity as well is it live like this? Because obviously I don't talk to anyone ever, apparently. <laughs> um, so this have a little preview. What do we what do we feel about um 
Tuesday. And uh, how, how do you guys feel about the the, the pizza cup in, in general, Jordan? Um, I know some people like it and some people really dislike the whole concept of it. Yeah, I love it personally. Um, <laughs> just from well, it's, it's another <laughs> opportunity for um, clubs like us to to excel and and get to Wembley. I mean, we've missed two two trips to Wembley in the past two seasons. So in our history, we played at Wembley twice and, and both times we weren't allowed to take fans. We were both behind closed doors. So um, probably the two biggest days of the, the club's history as well. So to get there for a third time and, and actually have fans there, I know <coughs> the club would, would absolutely love that and, and we as fans would as well. Um, it's also, I mean, we um, we played away at Chef Wednesday at Hillsborough in the uh, in, in sort of the round uh, in the in the group stages, and just the opportunity for for our supporters to to go to a ground like that when sort of four or five years ago we we're going to places like uh, Brackley and, and Leamington. So mm. it's uh, it, it's a great opportunity. I can see why perhaps more established clubs like maybe like Bradford, um, the, the bigger clubs don't like the idea of it because with the under-21 clubs coming in, which which I can understand. Um, but for clubs like us, uh, I think it's uh, a great opportunity. Yeah, I mean, Julian, you'll probably give an answer as well, very similar. Um, Money. Except... I was just literally going to say, yeah. <laughs> except all the Sutton fans sit there going, yeah, and it's 10 grand a win, and it's this much a win. <laughs> and, uh, um, so the money involved for us was, at first it was like, oh, yeah, we're not really bothered. And then when they started saying how much the prize money was, all of a sudden, uh, most of the older fans who've been around a long time, the ears just went, how much are we going to get for this? Um, I don't know if you guys are, 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 are similar with, with, with the money at the stake, but... Um, it's been great for us. It's been really, really good. Um, I jumped on the bandwagon quite early. Um, I think you were on possibly before me as well, Julian, weren't you? Did you go to the Palace game or not? Yes, I've been to all of them. Yeah. Uh, unlike someone like Dan Taylor, who's just... Uh, sorry, I've got to get that in. Yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. A, a Gandamonian blogger. Um, uh, yeah, he, he's now jumping on a bandwagon. And, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I've been to all of them. Uh, uh, and I, I've loved it. The only thing I'm surprised about, and I mentioned it on Saturday to a couple of people, sp sponsored by Papa John's. Why are Papa John's not having pizza vans at the grounds and stuff like that? I thought, you know, I'm surprised that yeah. I'm surprised, you know, you don't get anything, you don't get anything for it. It's nice of them to spend spend the money, but I thought they might want to sell some pizzas or something. But <laughs> love it. I'll have get, one. <laughs> you get onto their get onto their marketing team. That's what you yeah. need to do. Um, but I think I think we need a ruling because obviously I, I had bought my ticket and I've got my ticket for Tuesday, but I can't come on Tuesday because of the isolation rules. So yeah. I, I, I'm not jumped off this bandwagon. I'm still on it. I'm still allowed yeah, to come to Wembley. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a massive okay. game. It's a massive game for both clubs, I think. And, uh, you know, I mean, we've been very lucky. Um, we've been drawn at home <laughs> every game. Uh you know, uh, we've only we've only had to play away at um, at, at Portsmouth, um, and all the other all the other games have been at home. So uh, very lucky in that respect. So you mentioned you're coming yourself, Jordan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's there's a coach heading down. Unfortunately, our, we don't have the greatest number of supporters. Um, we don't travel particularly well, but the um, the fans that we do have are, are certainly very passionate. The, they do get behind the team. Um, we've got quite a lot of uh, sort of London-based support, so I'm sure we'll be there. So, unfortunately, we won't bring in massive numbers, but um, we will. We'll have, probably have a similar amount to, to what was there in the uh, in the league. But yeah, we, we've got a coach coming down, and I'll be uh, I'll be running that. Yeah, again, that's something that kind of will will just build. Um, as, as as both of us go along, because we've had we've had games in the not too distant past. Um, I think was it Barrow a couple of seasons ago where there was like 13, 14? 13. We took 13, 13, 13 people at Barrow on a Tuesday night, um, and that's not that long ago. In fact, mm -hmm. I think that was two thousand eighteen. Yeah. Um, now we're all getting bigger crowds because you've got 
people who are casually interested, same same as yourselves, a little bit like, oh, well, my main team's away. I'll pop down to Sutton. We, we've got a lot of ground hoppers coming to us at the moment because um, we're obviously a new new ground. Um, and we've been lucky enough a couple of times where we've been the only London team playing and a lot of neutrals come along to us. Um, but even then, I think at Stevenage, we still managed nearly, is it four or 500? Yeah, just under 400. Yeah, so even then, it's kind of building up a little bit where the people who are just come along casually are just returning and returning, and they're just finding that little something which is different from if you go to Premier League, you, you're a customer, um, and when you come to our level, you, you, you're not, you're, 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 you genuinely are, are welcomed and you, you're made to feel like you, you belong there after just a couple of games, really. Um, but what, what are your feelings on the match itself? What, what, do, we, what do you think we're going to have... A, I would imagine both teams are going to put out their strongest side at this point now. I'd, well, I'd, I'd like to think so. Um, we uh, we've probably put out our, out our strongest team in each of the other rounds, so certainly no reason why not. We um, we tried a new formation yesterday, so uh, with sort of three three four three with um, sort of two two wing backs, which worked really well, albeit it was against a, a pretty poor Oldham team. Um, but I was at the Sutton game earlier on, few, about a month ago now, and I thought we, we played well, and um, we we were unlucky not to come away with something from from that game. So that gives me a bit of confidence. What doesn't give me confidence is I, I think I've been to your ground three or four times, and uh, uh, <laughs> I don't think has seen us come away with anything yet. So but hopefully that will change on Tuesday. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> but you, you, yeah, your last two weeks though, um, you've sort of had highs and highs and lows, haven't you? You've had uh, the the three nil yesterday, the slightly different formation against the team sort of down there. Mm -hmm. um, but then the previous previous Saturday, it was uh, four nil against uh, Newport. Yeah, but they're they're quite a good side as well, though. They're doing well, uh, and we were. Abysmal. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can bring you can bring that into tomorrow. <laughs> oh, <geez. Yeah. laughs> um, so what um, what are your thoughts, Julian? How do you think it's going to go? Uh, well, it's going to be it's going to be a close game, isn't it? Um, obviously, we don't know uh, what's going to happen with Craig Eastman, um, whether he'll be available or not. Um, but obviously, we'll find out on Tuesday. But if not, we've got Kenny Davis to come in. Um, it will do a job. Um, I suspect there will be a few changes for Saturday um, because it, we have a we have a quality squad, um, and anybody that comes in can can do a job. So I suspect Baldwin might start. Um, I think it's just going to be a very close game. Two very good sides. I mean, you know, I, much that <laughs> a lot of our fans don't like Josh Falkingham, but he's a hell of a player. Uh, uh, his tenacity, uh, I do think he's. Uh, I think he's an excellent player. Um, and uh, but for a man so little, about five foot two or whatever he is, he's, he really is a good player. And they got some cracking players, Harrogate. Um, so it should be. It, it's got the makings of a good game. I think it's going to be a really entertaining game. Um, and uh, I just hope there's no controversy. May the best team win, Sutton. Um, and. Uh, um, no, they just hope there's no controversy about dodgy refs giving a dodgy penalty or something like that. You know, you don't you don't want that in a in a quarter final of a cup game. The stakes are pretty high now. Uh, Fifty thousand pounds to the winner, semi final. Um, you know, at the stake, it's it's massive. Against you know, you look at the other sides that you could possibly play uh, in a semi final. You know, some big clubs there. You know, um, and, and both sides are, will be desperately trying to get through. It'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see, but I think it's going to be a cracking game. And anybody who's podcast and thinking about coming, do come to the game. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, it's going to sound harsh on both teams. That I actually would have preferred for us both to get one of the, the so-called big clubs who aren't taking it very seriously. Um, and then we could have both got past them into the semi-finals. Um, rather than one of us having to to, to bow out at this stage, um, but Julian, I'm going to ask you for a, a prediction. Oh gosh, you avoid, right? Okay. You avoided it. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah I, you avoided it. I tell you what, we'll hear what Jordan thinks the game's going to be, and then we'll swing back for predictions from both of you. Uh, so, Jordan, how do you think the game's going to go? 
Um, we usually concede. Uh, I'll put it that way. So um, I think you guys will get a goal. Um, Julian mentioned there Josh Falkenham, who's been one of the integral parts of our rise up up the table. Uh, absolutely fantastic player. One of them that you love him to be on your team, but if you're playing against him, you must absolutely hate him. A um, bit like Robbie Savage. And, yeah. um, if if he has a bad game, genuinely, us as a uh, we, we don't do well. Whereas if he's on his game, we'll we'll do well. So hopefully he'll be on his game. Um, I, I'm hopeful. Um, as a prediction, I hate doing predictions for for the match, um, but I'll go. Two, two, one, Harrogate. Okay. Uh, Julian? Yeah, well, I'm going to go two, one as well, but unsurprisingly, I'm going two, one, Southern. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, we don't normally go two goals, two games without scoring. So I think, I, I think we'll, 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 we'll certainly score at least one, but I, I'm expecting two. We'll score two goals, I think. And, uh, you know, we, we're strong up front. Uh, we've got some quality up front, um, whoever's playing. Uh, yeah, 2 1, I think. Okay, well, I'm going to go for a 2 2 in normal and then we get through on pens. Uh, officially, I'm going to say 2 2. Wow. If that happens, I'll claim the victory on that because I've, <laughs> I've only got one result right all season. <laughs> so let's not put any money on Mike's predictions. Yeah. Um, so that brings us to a nice little natural close there. Um, I would just like to mention, obviously, um, on the socials um, at Sutton Podcast, if there's anything you um, want to mention to me or you just want to share it, please do. Um, thanks. There's no one joined in the live chats because I did forget to check and actually there's nothing in there. Thank God. Um, but thanks to both of you for your time. Um, thanks to everyone for listening. And um, I won't see you on Tuesday for reasons I've mentioned a million times. It's not even getting boring to myself yet, but I'm sure everyone else is bored. Um, thanks a lot, guys, and we'll see you all soon. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Cheers. Bye-bye. United! United!